All right. Here we go. I wonder where Caleb is home tonight, today. Let's see if he pops in just a bit. All right. Uh, a little bit of a review from last week. Last week we started talking about uh, area underneath curves. Um, this is the type of problem that you would end up seeing um, on an AP test. Remember, every everything that's above the x-axis is positive. Everything below the x-axis is negative. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find the integral from negative 1 to 4 of this function, okay? I better turn on my mic before I say good afternoon, Caleb. How are you doing this afternoon, Caleb? Thought maybe you got lost out in the snow. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this um, problem here. Um, it's very much geometry kind of based type problem. We want to find, did your mic work? No, it did not. I did not hear you. Try it again. Hey, I'm testing if this works. Nope, did not work. Let me, um, let me jump out and jump back in and see if it works then, okay? One second, I'll be right back. All right, give it a shot now. All right, I'm testing if. Tell you, I heard you saying I'm testing this, and then all of a sudden it cut out. So I'm not sure um, if you stopped talking. Is it working now? Does this work? It does work now, yes. Awesome. All right, Caleb, how much snow do you guys have on the ground? Only maybe an inch or so for now. Did you guys do you, do you guys still have snow from in the past or is it was you know did you all of your snow melt in the last couple of weeks? Oh, we still had snow from the past. We already still had a half an inch to an inch from the past. <laughs> now we haven't had snow since the beginning of November on the ground here. I am so excited because I figure if we can make it through December without any snow, it doesn't really feel like winter when there's no snow on the ground. It, and the, the lake is open, so it's like, eh, I could go out and do some fishing if I really wanted to. All right. <laughs> All right. Henry, did you get an answer for this problem? Oops, I should check my – there we go. All right. Henry, did you get a, an answer for this one? Now, this type of problem, again, it's just basic um, geometry. You can break it up any way that you want. I mean, I, I might have I might have just looked at this and said, okay, this is a, a trapezoid. I know a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2, so I've got 1, 2. So it's 3 plus 1 times the height. Well, the height would be 2 divided by 2. So this is going to end up being 4 here. But then over here, I have 1 and a half that I have to subtract off. So I've got 4 minus 
one and a half, which is two and a half. Is that correct? I think it is. Awesome. And the answer is down there, so I'm going to go with that one. All right, how about this one? This is another AP type question. It says the flow of oil in barrels per hour through a pipeline on July 9th is given by the graph shown above. Of the following, which best approximates the total number of barrels of oil that passes through the pipeline that day? And you can just put your answer in the chat box or you can just use your mic. Either one would work. Letter D, 4,000 or 3,000. Okay. If I was looking at this problem, I look at it, it's like, okay, 100 barrels of oil in six hours. So that means each one of these rectangles is about 600 barrels of oil. So I've got 600, 600 here, 600 here. And then this one looks, if I just approximate it, it looks like another 600. So I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, five times 600, which is 3,000, which is the correct answer to this problem. Awesome. Last week we talked about finding the integrals or area underneath curves um, using formulas, okay? Area formulas. There was nothing last week that I wanted you to use um, in taking the antiderivative. That's not where we were last week. So in this type of problem, I've got the absolute value of x over x. Well, I know what that graph looks like. And that graph looks like this. This is positive 1. This is negative 1. So I'm going from negative 5. So if I take a look here, we'll say that this is negative 5. So this is negative 5 times 1. So this is negative 5. And then I'm going all the way up to 8. So I'm going from, so this would be 8. So negative 5 plus 8. That's three. So the integral, negative five to eight of the absolute value of x over x is just three. You should be able to do simple functions, finding the area underneath them, just by using basically geometry is what we're doing. All right. How about letter B? The integral from two to six of two x plus three equal. Now, this one, we have to do a little bit more work. 8, okay, let's check it out. 2x plus 3, that would be an equation that looks like this. I'm going from 2 to 6. So really, I'm going to need to find. So at 2, if I put 2 in here, 2 times 6 is 4 plus, that's 7. If I put 6 in here, 2 times 6 is 12 plus 3 is 15. This looks like a trapezoid. These are my bases. This is my height. My height is 4. My base is 7 and 15. So I've got 7 plus 15 times the height, which is 4, divided by 2. So I can simplify that down. So 7 plus 15. You guys got 8? And I'm not even close to 8. Did I mess something up here? I got 7 plus 15, which is 22. 22 times 2. Why did you do 15 minus 7? Am I looking at this wrong? And I'm doing, I'm, I'm taking this as a trapezoid. And trapezoid is, is height base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. So I think what both me and Kel did was we inserted it without antiderivative reading um because i don't have a graph in front of me but what you can do is uh yeah based stuff what you're saying Caleb, but you just plug six and two into that instead of plugging six and two into x squared plus three x um, and that's what i did too and that's why i got eight as well but sure. yeah, so you guys, you guys use the integral to figure it out because i'm i mean even if i use the integral on this thing Okay, so let me let me finish this off. I end up with 20, I end up with 44 here for my area. Okay, now if I if I used an integral, 
don't I end up with 2x squared over 2 plus 3x on the interval from 2 to 6? So that would give me x squared plus 3x from 2 to 6. And if I put 6 in here, 36 plus, so that's 36 plus 18 minus, and if I put 2 in here, that's 4 plus 6, so that's 10. So 36 plus 18, that's 54. Minus 10, that's 44. Man, I get to, woo, Mr. Shanklin's on fire today. I get the same answer both ways. Oh, you just plugged in the 6 and 2 without anti. What? <laughs> Man, that would not be right. <laughs> All right. So maybe you guys should, uh, maybe you guys should find the area underneath the curve instead of trying to use calculus because man, your calculus is bad. All right, so let's try, let's try letter C. Now letter C, I, I mean, I don't even know what the integral of the integer function is. I don't think there is an integral for the integral function. So you really have to know what the graph looks like for this one um, in order to get this one right. So the graph for this thing, the integral function is a lot of teachers call it the step function. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have to go all the way up to seven. So the step function starts from zero, goes to one, and then it jumps up, and then it jumps up, then it jumps up, and it always jumps up one, jumps up, then it jumps up, then it jumps up. I think I'm at seven now. So it's really going to be one plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six. Unless I, did I go too far? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not so sure this adds up to 15. One plus two plus three plus, uh, it looks like it adds up to like 20, doesn't it? 10, it looks like it adds up to 20. Oh, wait, four to seven. Darn. All right. All right. You guys are back on track. I just made a mistake. All right. So I'm going from one, two, three. So I'm going from four to seven. So my answer should be 15. All right. All right. I'll, I'll concede. <laughs> All right. So I guess we're tied now. All right. Tiebreaker. Letter D. <laughs> What's the... What is the integral from the square root of 16 minus x squared? All right, I think I can do this one. I should have to wait for your answers first, but, um, and this one, I, I just noticed that this is a semicircle. It looks like the radius is four. And I am taking half of a circle, so it's pi r squared divide by two. So my radius is four. So that's going to be 16 pi over two, which is eight pi. I guess it's a draw. All right. So finding the integrals is basically just finding the area underneath curves. This week, we have a lot of different stuff, basic integration, indefinite integral, definite integral. Do you guys know what the difference between an indefinite integral and a definite integral is, what is the difference between these two? What is the difference between a definite integral and an um, indefinite integral? An indefinite integral, you're just looking for an uh, equation, and a definite integral, you have to get an answer. Correct. That is exactly right. So if I gave you something like uh, the integral from uh, the integral of 2x squared plus 3, and I gave you the integral from, let's say, 0 to 4 of 2x squared plus 3. This is called an indefinite integral because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up with an antiderivative. This is called a definite integral because when I get my antiderivative, I've, I've got to do f of b minus f of a to get a solution. So that, I mean, we talked about a lot of this stuff last week. The big thing for tonight is going to be integration by substitution, okay? 
Next week, we are going to do integration by parts. You guys should not have learned integration by parts last year. Now, I know, Henry, you um, yourself taught, right, in Calc? You were homeschooled last year? Did you, um, did you do integration by parts? I mean, obviously, if you had a book, you could have done everything in BC Calculus 2. But integration by parts is not an AB uh, topic. So we will be covering that next week. It's pretty cool. I, I don't like the way the, the textbook teaches it. Um, so I will show you the method that I use. I think it's really cool. It's, it's pretty easy. It's not bad. Um, but it is, there are some things that you have to really watch out for. All right, so the big thing for today will be integration by substitution, but we still have a few things that we have to talk about. Trig, trigonometric formulas, okay? And these are all, when you think about it, they're basically going backwards. So if I had, I don't like green, I can't see that, I'm getting old. If I had f of x is equal to the sine of x, and I wanted to find the derivative of this, I'd say, okay, well, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Well, now, if I wanted to take the integral of cosine of x, I'm just going right back to what I started with. So if you understand derivatives for trig functions, you're just basically going backwards to get the, the, the integral of the function. And that, that's, that's anything. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if I gave you, if I gave you f of x is equal to x squared, and I asked you, okay, what's the derivative of this? Well, f prime of x is equal to 2x. Well, then if I asked you to take the integral of this, you better get this back or else we're doing something really wrong, right? So an, an integral basically undoes what a derivative did. So trigonometric functions, if you understand the derivatives, you're just basically going backwards. Now, being able to memorize them all, I don't know. Um, I'm not 100% not sure memorizing all of these is a wise thing to do, but you guys have a lot more brain matter than I do, so you probably could memorize them all. I mean, obviously, sign is always there. You better know sign. That, that is one that will always come up. But... For me, I would have this on a three by five card sitting next to my computer or whenever I do my homework. So I could just look back and say, oh, you know, the integral of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. All right, that, that I think is where students should be. All right, and then if you're talking about the integrals, uh, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. And remember that plus C is because it's a constant. We don't know what that constant is, so we just put plus C there. E to the U, interesting function, because it is the only function that the derivative and the antiderivative is itself. There's no other function that will ever do that. Okay? And then the other integrals are there. You can just take a look at them. All right, now, this is an interesting problem. Um, and I, I forgot what they call these. I think they call them, um, my mind is not where it should be. Um, I forgot what they call these type problems. But this is a problem where you're not going to end up with a plus C at the end. You're going to end up with the exact formula for this function. So they, they tell us that the derivative of this function is this. And then they tell us, well, this point is on the original function, g. So we know that negative 2 comma negative 2 is on our function. So in order to solve this, what I would do is I would take my antiderivative of, so I'd go negative 6s squared minus 3. So if I take the antiderivative of this, I end up with, um, what is that, negative 6s to the third over 3 minus 3s plus c, I'm going to simplify, so I get negative 2s to the third minus 3s plus c, but I do know that negative 2, negative 2 is a solution to this, so what I need to do is I need to find my value for c, so if I put negative 2 in for y, negative 2 in for this, that's negative 2, negative 2 to the third is negative 8, 
minus three times negative two plus C. So if I solve this thing, I get 16 minus six. Uh, darn it. That's negative six. So I messed up. So this is a minus a negative six. So yes, that becomes plus. So that's 22 plus C is equal to negative two. So if I add 22, C is equal to, I messed something up big time because I don't get the answer that they do over there. All right, so what did I do wrong here? So I've got 16, or negative two times negative eight, that's 16, minus three times negative two, that's negative six. So that is 22. Oh, I'm gonna subtract 22 from both sides. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Mr. Shanking that is math skills. All right, so that gives me negative 24. So C is equal to negative 24. So my original equation should be negative 2S to the third minus 3S minus 24. So if they give you a value, you should be able to work your way backwards to the original function that you started with. Okay. Any questions on that, on that one? All right. Now, the big part of today is U substitution. A lot of times when you take when you're taking an integral, you can't just take the integral of the function. You have to use what is called U substitution. It's a very powerful tool to take the integral of a lot of different functions. Okay? And this is how we use U substitution. that at all. all right so if I'm given a function like this x to the third minus 2x squared plus 3 to the fourth power what we're going to do is we're going to let you and this should this would really you really should have dx at the back side of any function that you do because that that's basically telling you unless I don't remember what I did here. I must have. Okay. okay. So I guess this isn't a derivative. So let's take the derivative of this function. Okay. So let's find y prime. Y prime is bring a four down, leave the middle alone. X to the third minus two x squared plus three, all raised to the third power, times, and then the derivative of the of the inside. Well, that gives me 3x squared minus 4x. Do you guys agree that that, and then once I take a derivative, I really should put dx behind it? Do you guys agree that that is the original, or that is a derivative? Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to take an integral. Now, if you think about it, when we take the integral of this thing, we should get this back, right? But whew, could you take an integral of this thing just by itself? Could you just take the integral of 4x to the third minus 2x squared plus 3 to the third power times 3x squared minus 4x dx? I mean, there is no way I could take an, I, I couldn't take the integral of that thing without having to use what is called u substitution. Now, u substitution is pretty awesome. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your um, functions and you're gonna let it be u. Now, I can, I, I've done this for a long time, so I understand that u value has to be the highest power because if I take this one here and I take the derivative, because we're gonna take the derivative of it, it's not gonna cross this off. But the derivative of this will cross this off. So I'm gonna let u equal x to the third minus 2x squared plus 3. Now, some kids are going to say, but Mr. Shanklin, it's to the third power. That's not a big deal. I don't care about that because I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write 4 u to the third power. u is this, right? So I'm just going to substitute u in for that. So now your next step, once you have your u value, and you could have, I could have picked 3x squared minus 4x, but 
not going to work. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the derivative. So du, the derivative of u with respect to x, is going to equal, okay, so I take the derivative of this, 3 squared, I should have put that down there, 3x squared minus 4x dx. Now I'm going to solve for dx, so du over 3x squared minus 4x is equal to dx. Why did I do that? Well, guess what? In the case of dx, I am going to put this, because that's I know dx is equal to this. So in place of dx, I'm going to put du over 3x squared minus 4x. I'm starting to run into my other work. But why is that important? Because look what happens. I can cross off the 3x squared. So now I'm just left with 4u to the third du. If and when you use a u substitution, if you end up with an x up here, there's something wrong. You can only end up with u's. That's why it's called u substitution. You're substituting the u value in, and you should only end up with u's. So now, if I want to take the integral of this, I remember that I can put a 4 on the outside. So the only thing I have to know how to take an integral of is u to the third. Well, that is u to the fourth over 4, isn't it? So now I'm going to plug in my u value. I found my u value to be x minus 2x squared plus 3. And guess what? These 4s are going to cross out. So I've got x to the third minus 2x squared plus 3, all raised to the fourth power. Lo and behold, that is the exact same thing I started with. So when you use u substitution, you should get the original function that you started off with. Okay, that is u substitution. Now that was kind of messy on my page. Let's try one that is less messy. All right. So I want you to take the integral of 28 times 7x minus 2 to the third power. What are you guys going to use as your u value here? So u is equal to what? What should we use as u? 7x minus 2. Good. 7x minus 2. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. So du is equal to 7 dx. So I'm going, to, I'm going to solve for dx, so I did right through. So du over 7 is equal to dx. All right, so now, wherever I see dx, I'm going to put this. Wherever I see u, I'm going to put this. Nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> wherever I see 7x minus 2, I'm going to put a u. So, I'm going to, so my integral is going to be the integral from 28 times u to the third. And wherever I see dx, I'm going to put du over 7. Well, the 28 and the 7 can simplify down. That becomes 4. So I'm going to put that 4 on the outside. This is the only thing I have to take the integral of, u to the third. Well, the derivative of u to the third is u to the fourth over 4. I still have that 4 on the outside. Well, lo and behold, those 4s cross out. Now all I have to do is put my u value back in, 7x minus 2 to the fourth power. That was the original function. Now, I can check myself really easily. How would I check myself? I would take the derivative of this. If I take the derivative of this, I better get this, right? Well, if I take derivative, I put the 4 down, 7x minus 2 to the third power times the derivative of the inside, which is 7. Well, 4 times 7, that's 28. 7x minus 2 to the third power. Look at that. So I'm really... When I'm doing these types of problems, I'm also checking myself, so I'm really practicing doing integrals, and I'm practicing taking derivatives, because that way I, I check myself as I go. All right, any questions up until now? All right, the next problem is going to be your guys. Uh-oh. All right. I want you to find integral of this problem. Now, 
If you guys want to work the problem out on the board, you're more than welcome to do that. Or you can do it on a piece of paper and pencil and, and just put it in the chat box. I don't, it really doesn't matter to me. Okay, so let's see what you guys get for that one. One fourth sine two x squared. You both got the same thing. Oh man. All right. So if I was going to do this problem, my u value is going to be two x squared. So then I'm taking the derivative. So I get du, du is equal to four x dx. So if I'm rewriting this problem, I'm going to go co x cosine of u times dx. Well, dx. Oops. I, should have rewrote this. Uh, so dx is equal to du over 4x. Uh, the x's are going to cross off. So I'm left with 1 fourth cosine of u du. Now I know that I can pull the 1 fourth to the outside. So that's cosine. So the only thing I really have to know is what is the integral of cosine of u? And that's sine of u, right? So this is going to be the sine of u. I still have that one fourth there, and then I'm just going to plug my u value in. So this is going to be one fourth sine of 2x squared. So you guys were absolutely correct. That is u substitution. Not, not real difficult. Well, it is if you're just learning it. Um, I, I, I've taught so many years in face to face schools, and the, the kids, they just didn't know what to make the u value. They were uh, you know, they would take, oh, the u value is cosine. Well, that's not going to help. <laughs> I mean, making u the cosine u, uh, that 2x squared is not going to cross out. So you really have to be able to make sure that you pick the right value to be your u value. If you don't, it really messes up. All right, here's another one. Evaluate x squared e x to the third. All right, Let's see what you get for that one. One third e, boy, boy, man, you guys are good. I mean, I didn't even get to have any of my hot chocolate here yet. You guys are getting these answers way too quick. All right, so in this problem, u is equal to x to the third du is equal to 3x squared dx. Solve for dx, so dx is equal to du over 3x squared. And then I'm just going to plug in what I know. So I've got x squared e to the u, and then where I see dx, I'm going to put du over 3x squared. Well, guess what? The x squared's cross out, so I'm really left with integral. This is going to be one-third, so I'm just going to pull it to the outside right away, e to the u. This is the only thing I have to be able to take an integral of. Well, I know the integral of e to the u is e to the u. So this is e to the u over 3. Plug my u value back in, e x to the third over 3. Done. That is u substitution at its very best. You guys are pretty good. You remember u substitution. Uh, let's see here. All right. I'm going to see if we get a harder problem in here. Uh, let's try this one. This is a definite integral, and you want to uh, solve it by using u substitution. This one's a little bit tougher, I think. Okay. And 
it is the integral from zero to two. So this is a definite integral. So I want, I definitely want an answer when you're done. <laughs> See how you did that? Definite integral, definitely want an answer. All right, so what is the value of this problem? Whoa, you guys are slowing down. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just start working on this problem, and you guys will probably have your answers in before I'm done. But if I was going to work on this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say u is equal to x squared minus 9 du is equal to 2x dx. So du over 2x equals dx. All right, so now I'm going to I've got an integral from 0 to 2 of x. Uh, and then where I see x squared minus 9, I'm going to put a u value there, or u times uh, du over 2x. Those x's are going to cross off. Again, I have 2 on the bottom, so I'm just going to pull that 1 half on the outside. 0 to 2, and then I have 1 over u. Well, what is integral of 1 over u? Isn't that just natural log of u? I still have a 1 half in front. Ooh, this is getting interesting. Um, now, I'm going to plug my u value back in here. So this is going to be 1 half natural log of x squared minus 9. Okay. Could I put, could I put the 1 half, anytime you have a 1 half, could I put it up here? Is that, is that true? When you have a number in front of a natural log or a log, you can make it a the power so really my problem is natural log of the square root of x squared minus 9 that's what one half is it's the square root and then I'm going from 0 to 2 so I'm gonna plug 2 in here 2 squared is 4 4 minus oh that is not nice is that that turns out I'm gonna take I'm going to take the square root out of there. <laughs> I'm going to take the square root out of there. I'm going to put the one half back in front. I'm just going to go one half natural log. Uh, oh, that's right, because when you do a natural log, it's always the absolute value, isn't it? Ooh, forgot that fact. Minus 9, absolute value, on the interval from 0 to 2. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm just going to leave the one half out in front because it makes no difference. So if I'm going to put the 2 in here, I've got 4 minus 9. Uh, 4 not minus 9 is negative 5, but I've got the absolute value of that. So I've got 1 half natural log of 5 minus, and if I put 0 in here, I get negative 9, but the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. So that's going to be the natural log, or 1 half natural log of 9. Oof. I'm just, I'm just looking at this, thinking how I can rewrite this. Can I rewrite this as a natural log of the square root of 5 minus the natural log of the square root of 9? And the square root of 9 is just 3, isn't it? So I've got the natural log of the square root of 5 minus natural log of 9 
which is the natural log of three. And you guys remember, if you have a if you have a log or a natural log and you're subtracting, you can rewrite it as a single log, natural log of square root of five over three. That would be my answer. It's kind of an ugly answer. I don't know what the natural log of square root of five over three is, but all right. How far did you guys get? Did you guys get to the natural log of square root of five over three? All right, somebody had a natural log of two. Where did you get the natural log of two from? <laughs> yeah, that was a that was kind of an interesting problem. When, uh, definitely awesome. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right. Very nice. Okay. That was a that was a tough one. No question about it. How about this one? What are you going to let your u value be for this problem? So what is your U value going to be here? Sine of X. I agree. Because I would rewrite this problem as the sine of X quantity squared. Because that's, that is the same thing. When they write it this way, this is what it means. And then cosine of X. So yes, I would U equal the sine of X in this problem. And then the derivative would be cosine of x dx. Ah, see why that's important? Because now that cosine is going to cross off because du over cosine of x is equal to dx. So when I plug this in here, I'm going to have u to the second times cosine of x times du over cosine of x. So now when I simplify, that cosine of x is going to cross off. So I'm really just left with u squared times du. I don't even have to be able to take a derivative or an integral of sine or cosine uh, because if I do this, I just have u squared. So that's going to be u to the third over 3. So now if I plug this back in, this is going to be the sine, the third of x over 3. That should be my integral. There's some really good problems out there using U substitution. All right, let's try another one. How about this one? I'll give you guys a little bit of time to work on it. This one's not, this one's not so bad. This one you should be able to get in no time. All right, I'm just looking at the, the weather radar and it looks like 
it's just rain here, but it still looks like it's snowing up at you guys. All right, so if I did this problem, I'm going to let u equal 3 minus 2x. So du is equal to negative 2 dx. So du over negative 2 is equal to dx. If I plug this stuff in, I've got the, co the integral of the cosine of u over du negative 2. So I'm just going to pull that negative 2 out in front. So that's just going to be negative 1 half integral of cosine of u du. If I take the integral of cosine, it's just going to be sine, isn't it? Still have that negative 1 half in front. I'm going to plug in my u value, which is 3 minus 2x. That should be my integral. So you guys are absolutely correct. Very nice, Caleb. Maybe. Only one slide to go. Let's see here. Let's see what type of problem I gave you. Oh, this one's way too easy. All right. Let's see who can get done the fastest. And then as soon as you're done, you should go outside and shovel the sidewalks. <laughs> Are the lakes up by you guys frozen? Like you guys are up by Winnebago, aren't you? Is Winnebago frozen over? Yes, but no. You're saying you probably wouldn't want to walk out there? <laughs> You haven't seen it? All right. So in this problem, let's see here. 1 over 18, or 118, and 3x plus 1 to the 6th power. Let's take a look here. So u is equal to 3x plus 1. du is equal to uh, 3 dx. So du over 3 is equal to dx. So if I plug this in, I've got the integral of u to the 5th, uh, du over 3. So I'm going to bring that 3 to the outside. I take the integral now. I have u to the 6th over 6. I still have the, oh, that was 1 third. Uh, so that's going to be uh, u to the 6th over 18. And then just put my u value in there. I get 3x plus 1 to the 6th all over 18. U substitution. Next week, we're going to be talking about taking integrals using what is called... Um, man, I said it in the beginning of class tonight. Uh, integration by parts. All right. Any questions on this stuff? If not, you guys have a great week, and I will see you back next week. Next week is the last uh, Monday before winter break, before Christmas. That is crazy, isn't it? All right. <laughs> Bye.